Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Today's video is going to be very brief and to the point. Herein you'll find a useful lesson you can carry forward. Many of us have invested a fair bit of money into our HF portable equipment. In fact, it was the high cost of a good quality HF portable rig that kept me out of the game for many years. Knowing that, you need to ask yourself if you are taking enough care of your precious gear. Remember, one of the reasons many portable enthusiasts engage in this facet of the hobby is in the name of emergency preparedness. If the time comes when your community needs you to be ready, will your gear be all set to go? Over the years, I've constantly tried to upgrade the material I've used to protect my rigs and accompanying equipment to ensure they will arrive at the deployment site in one piece and in good working order. In the early going, I used with some success a laptop backpack. I found my Yesu FT817 fit nicely into the laptop pouch, and the front of the bag could be used for antenna, coax, and other necessary hardware. Not so much with the FT897, though. I could fit the 897 into the backpack, but the fit was tight enough that I knew the rig could be damaged if the bag impacted the ground or other objects while on the way to and back from the operating location. This situation led me to purchase these protective cases that guarantee safe transit for the goods inside. To further safeguard the rigs, I inserted silica gel bags into the watertight cases to keep moisture from getting trapped inside and causing damage to my expensive cargo. I got to a point where I considered myself well prepared. I figured I had done everything possible to guarantee I would be ready for deployment at a moment's notice. Just recently, however, I discovered I had overlooked an important consideration. It is not without some degree of embarrassment that I share with you this sad tale of woe. I am embarrassed not just for knowing that clearly my knowledge set in this area was not as complete as I thought, but that I had completely disregarded such a simple matter in my preparation process. Once my HF portable transceivers are safely home after a deployment, I set them up in a place of honor on my desk in the basement office. For base operations, my ICOM IC7410 takes precedence due to its more advanced feature set and more ergonomic design. The portable Yesus are rarely used in the home shack. To protect the 817 and 897 against dust, I cover them. It's late January now, deep into the Canadian winter. Due to a heavy work schedule and family obligations, I have not been outside operating HF Portable since late October. These two fine radios that have served me so well in past years have not been taken outside to do what they were built to do in all that time. This past weekend, while doing some shack cleaning, I removed the dust cover to check on the rigs, and to my great horror, discovered the issue I am about to share with you. I will warn you in advance. What I am about to show you is uncomfortable to view. Yet I feel the sight of this is valuable information for any who like to venture outside with their portable equipment. Brace yourself. It's a difficult lesson, but through this experience I have learned it well. Please don't let this happen to you. If you have portable gear, get it outside and put it to use. Don't mistreat your loyal companions. Don't be accused of portable gear abuse. That's all for this time. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.